To start your Robert Indiana word art, you'll need a square piece of paper. First, write your name on the back with a pencil. Don't forget to write your class code below your name. Then we're going to fold our paper into four even squares. We're going to take one side and fold it across. So we're folding this in half. And then we're going to fold the two shorter sides together to make a smaller square. Then we should have four even squares when we open up our paper. We'll be putting one letter from our word in each square. You need to choose a positive four letter word for this project. Robert Indiana often uses the word love. You don't have to choose love. You could think of another word that is similar, like hope or kind. We're going to draw our letters so they almost reach the top and the bottom of each square shape. So when I draw my letters, I'm going to draw them so that they are big block or bubble letters. But first, I'm just lightly drawing them in each box. Then I can figure out how to design them into a block or bubble letter. So when I draw bubble letters, I like to draw the original letter shape just as a line like I have here. And then I like to draw my bubble shape around the letter. So I'm drawing around the L shape that I drew first and I'm creating a bubble shape around it. It's important to do this lightly with your pencil so that you can erase it if you don't like it. Then you can erase the original letter on the inside and then you have a bubble letter shape. You can also make yours into more of a block letter by having more sharp corners. Like the corner of the L here is more of a block letter now because it has a sharper edge. But for mine, I'm going to make it into a bubble letter style and keep them rounded. You should choose what works best for your art. Now in Robert Indiana's sculptures, we actually see the O of love turned a little bit at an angle. So I'm going to actually redraw this and make it look like his work. I'm gonna go ahead and create some bubble letters here by lightly drawing around each letter. Each letter should be at least as big as your hand. We don't want any teeny tiny letters. Your letter should take up most of the space and almost reach the top and the bottom of each square. If it doesn't, you need to redraw it and make it a little bit bigger. We're going to be using some oil pastels to outline our letters. And I'm going to choose some colors to give each letter an outline with first. I'm just gonna go over the pencil line. I wanna make it thick enough so that the color really shows up. Sometimes you might need to go back over it one more time. So when I'm outlining my letters with oil pastels, I'm choosing colors that will go with the color that I'm going to paint each letter. We're going to paint with watercolors after this, and I'm going to choose mostly warm colors to paint on the inside of my letters. Then in the background, I'm going to paint with mostly cool colors. You don't have to do exactly warm or cool colors, but your letter should stand out from the background. So the letter and the background should be a different color. Also, when you paint your other squares in and letters, you want them to stand out from each other. So they should be different as well. So each one looks unique. Once you've outlined each letter with oil pastel and you've made each outline thick by going around it a few times, then you can start adding some patterns to your letters. I'm using some diagonal lines here in my L, but you can use any kind of line or shape to fill in your block or bubble letters. When I'm choosing colors for my patterns, I'm keeping with the same theme that I started with. I decided to make my letters warm colors and I'm going to paint my background cool colors. So I'm still using those colors as I add patterns. Now I'm done adding patterns because each letter is filled with lines. I chose to continue using diagonal lines in my letters, but you can choose to change your pattern or keep it the same. It's up to you because you are the artist. Then I'm going to carefully put away my oil pastels. Notice how they are still in rainbow order and they all fit inside of the box. 
The next step is painting with watercolors. So I have a messy mat, my watercolors, and a water cup and a paintbrush. Now when I'm painting my letters, I'm going to continue to use warm colors because that was my plan here. My backgrounds are going to be cool colors so that they stand out from the letters. When we paint over oil pastel, we are creating an oil resist from the watercolor. Watercolor and oil pastels don't mix. They don't like each other very much. And instead of mixing together, they just kind of sit on the paper together. Sometimes when you paint with watercolors, some of your oil pastel gets covered a little bit. If you don't like that, like some of the pink is covering the yellow, then you can get a tissue, put a little bit of just water over the area that you want to lighten and blot that a little bit. And some of the color will come off from the oil pastel. If you have a lot of paint on your brush and not a lot of water, that's another way that your oil pastel might not show up. See right here, I have a lot of paint. The pink is pretty dark. So I could use my tissue again to blot away some of the color before it dries. The key with watercolor is using water to make it work. So if you don't have enough water, your paint could be a little gooey, sticky, or a little bit too thick. I'm gonna go ahead and paint my letters each a different color, staying with my warm color theme. Remember that you don't have to just use warm colors on your letters and cool colors on your background, but think about a way that you can make your letters stand out from the background colors that you choose. They should all be different and show contrast. Contrast is when you make parts of your artwork stand out by choosing different colors or patterns it makes it easy for the viewer of your art to see all the different parts of your artwork. I finished up painting my E with pink. I need to rinse off my brush before I move on to a new color. And now I can use yellow without getting any pink on it. Make sure that you're always cleaning your brush before you use a new color. One thing that I'm doing here is outlining the folds with the color of oil pastel. I should have done this step before I painted, but I forgot. You should do this before you paint, after you outline your letters or right before you outline your letters with oil pastel. It's hard to outline around the wet paint. This will help separate the sections that the letters are in so that you can make four separate backgrounds. So I'm just outlining right on top of the crease here. And I used four different colors of oil pastel. I chose all cool colors here because I want my backgrounds to be cool colors, but you should pick the colors that you like. I'm going over them again, just to make them a little bit brighter and bolder. And now I can start painting my background with watercolors. I'm going to carefully paint around the shape of the letters. The oil pastel should help keep the colors separate because remember, oil pastel creates an oil resist. One thing that you can do with your watercolors is a technique called wet on wet. First, paint an area with color so your paper is wet. Then you can drop some color into that area. So I'm using a little bit of green and putting that into the blue. You're going to see the color bleed and blend together. So I'm going to do that around each letter. Remember that you should paint each background a different color. So I'm not going to use this blue again. I'm going to make each background a different color so that they all stand out and your letter should not be the same color as your background. So I'm choosing different colors than my letters as well. All right, so I am all done painting my Robert Indiana word. Because my painting is wet, I need to put this on the drying rack with my messy mat. With your watercolors, make sure that you've kept all of the colors as clean as you can. I noticed that I got a little bit of green on my yellow, so I'm just using a little water with my brush to get some of that off. And now it looks pretty good. 
You can also use a tissue to blot the color off once you add water. Sometimes you need to do that depending on how much extra color got on the paint. I hope you had fun learning about the famous artist Robert Indiana and choosing a positive word to create your own artwork inspired by him. I can't wait to see how yours turns out.